So, uh, can you guys bring, uh, give a warm welcome to Sarah Haskins. <laughs> I did not know where Slipknot was from, so I did not know that, that was me. This is a fun little experience, being everybody on the same level. Um, this is interesting. I have to say, I've never, I haven't ever done stand-up where I've ever like, stood on the same level as everyone I was talking to. And most stand-up comedians only do stand-up so that like, we can stand on a stage and get some form of attention. I do it because I was a middle child. And I, no one ever paid attention to me until at least one of my nipples was out. So, now, and like statistically, one of the comedians here, and I'm not at liberty to say which one, but statistically, one of them is absolutely pissed that the stage was not available. <laughs> one of them absolutely was. Yep, yep. Was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so let me just quick get like a read of the room. Um, just show of hands. Has this ever happened to you, or have you ever done this? Show of hands, have you ever sent a text on purpose to the wrong person, and then said to them, oh, whoops, sorry, wrong person, because you didn't just have the stones to tell them what you needed to tell them? Okay, good, all right, so I'm not the only Libra in the room. Uh, in your company, very excited to be with some Libras. Um, no, I really love horoscopes and astrology. It was like so much fun to discover something that like made it so that I never have to accept responsibility for anything that I do. I mean, it was a great, great discovery. And I use it for everything. Like all the time I'll just be late. If I'm like two hours late to something, I'll just be like, I am so sorry, but um, this week I'm, I have a Gemini moon. <laughs> there's just a lot going on up here. Or I'll be like, ma'am, I couldn't be more sorry that I hit your son with my car. But, um, Mercury's in retrograde. So, <laughs> so like, you, you understand, but if you don't mind, I would like if we could get him out from under there. <laughs> I need to go have my tarot cards read. I just need to get everything in alignment, everything in the correct space. Um, I mostly use it, though, um, for giving, like, poorly, poorly thought out advice to my friends that, like, also have very chaotic love lives. So they'll ju I'll just be like, listen, I know that you are so disappointed that he has no vested interest in seeing you again, but it's time to face the facts, and the facts are that you are an Aries, and he's a Capricorn that was never going to work out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no. Men are full of shit. Woo! Um, <laughs> Woo! You guys know, fuck men, right? <laughs> um, no, I, but really, why? And, like, I know that this is my time and my space, and like I'm not gonna give it to any straight white men like looking for more of a platform than those who are already doing stand-up comedy. Yes. But I would like an answer. I just like why? Why are you guys so full of shit? Um, I just, like I asked one of my guy friends one time. I was like, I was like, what? Why the lies in the very beginning? Like, what is that? And he was like. Well, here's the thing, like, if we didn't say all those things, like, you guys wouldn't trust us. And I was like, oh. and I was like, okay, so let me, like, read that back to you and just see how it sounds coming out the other end. Um, so you start with lies so that you can establish trust. With lies. So that you can then break the trust with more lies. And he's like, well, it sounds really bad when you say it. And I was like, that's, well, that, well that's because it is bad. And I, like, I don't understand it. It's like, you guys are so scared, like, any sort of confrontation, like, any sort of confrontation. Here's what I'm really getting to. If I've had your balls in my mouth, <laughs> I deserve a text back. Yes! <laughs> so Amen! I deserve that acknowledgement as a human being. Yes. I just like, I deserve that much. But you know, in all fairness, some of my bad encounters with men are like 100% on me, and I will own that. Last weekend, I was at a karaoke bar and I met a man that was wearing a shark mask, and the interaction didn't end there. Like, and it should have. Anyone that wants to wear a shark mask in broad daylight, when it's not Halloween and you're not 12, like that says all that I need to know about you, 
and this isn't gonna work. But the interaction didn't end there, it kept going, and I like ended up giving this dude my number, because I guess I hate myself. <laughs> and in three days, this man sent me 32 texts. I ignored seven of his calls. He translated his messages into two different languages so that I would hopefully understand. And all of that, I never responded to this man. I, that's like the most important thing. And the very last thing he said to me was, I'm coming to see you. Which is always like really troubling to hear from someone when you don't think that they know where you are. Uh -huh. Like you have to get up from your seat and like look around to make sure that no one's following you. Or like you have to like you have to make sure like do I have any of my location services on for this Christmas? <laughs> um, and that, like honestly, I didn't block him right away because I wanted to just give it a few minutes. Just because it's so much fun to see a man strung out. <laughs> There's nothing more fun than to see a man who just like can't who can't fucking who can't fucking deal. <laughs> like he's got to send 32 messages. <laughs> um, no, but I you know you have to respect his persistence if nothing else, because he did not give up. But I think that where he really went wrong was that he said that I was beautiful more than once, and like, I am. But like, also, if you ever, if any man ever tells me that I'm beautiful more than once in an evening, I like check my pockets to see if my phone's still there. <laughs> like I always, if like a man is complimenting me too much, he's trying to steal my heart or my wallet, or like maybe both, I don't know. Yeah. He's, trying, he's trying to get something from me. That's the important part. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, I used to be religious. I am not now. Anybody here religious? I used to be. Okay, this is not going to go well for you. Um, I'm going to shit on all your beliefs. Uh, no, I, to like, I totally understand wanting to believe in something that like makes it feel like all of this isn't fucking pointless. Like, I totally understand that, but also I just have a couple bones to pick. I just have some interesting little thoughts that I would like to kind of beef out with God. Um, here's the thing, I, like all of his followers, I don't understand how you guys like want to, or like can believe in someone who totally has the ability to fix everything and just die. Mm -hmm. Like, and he, like he's, on, he's in the Bible, he's just like, I can move mountains. And like, it, also he's way too chill for someone that knows so fucking much. Like he knows who killed John Benet Ramsey. <laughs> and he's done nothing with that information. I just think it's really interesting. That's all I'm saying. Uh -huh. And also, if like if the situation is as I understand it, and I went to Catholic school, so I think I understand it pretty well. If the situation is as I understand it, he like has control over everything, or at least gets to green light everything that happens on Earth, and like he just does. Like I, I imagine it all goes down in like a meeting. And like the angels are just like, no, there's like this dude who said he's gonna kill 11 million people and God's just like, well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and one of the angels I imagine is like fed up and they're just like, dude, you absolutely could do something. Like you know you have the ability to do something about what's going on. And he's just like, listen, if they want to keep free will, they're gonna need to deal with some genocide. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> also, dude asked people to write a book for him about him. Like, he went up and asked, he like interrupted people in like the fucking old times when they actually had to like work for shit. Like not like, you know, us now. I mean, we're all in Madrid, so we don't work for anything. <laughs> but um, no, like he would go up in the middle of the night and just be like, hey, like I'm sorry, you're I know you're working really hard so that like you don't have to start, but do you mind like writing this book for me? <laughs> and they fucking did for some reason. And I feel like in my mind, God was like way over involved in the planning. He was just like, dude, Put that story in where I burn the bush. Or like put in that part where I get that girl pregnant by magic. Like that story is ridiculous to me. And it just proves that God had to be so good looking. Like he had to be so fucking hot. Because here's the deal. He went to this 16 year old girl who was engaged in the middle of the night and was like, yo, Mary, like, you are my baby? And Mary wasn't dumb. She was like hitching her wagon to a star. This guy was fucking hot. <laughs> she's just like, yeah, fuck my fiance. Let's have a baby. And then she's just like, so like, do you want to have sex now? Or like, we go get dinner and then have sex later. Um, and he was just like, oh no, that's the cool part. So like, we're not gonna have sex. I'm just gonna get you pregnant. <laughs> and then she's like, shit. Because here's the thing. Mary had to go through being a 16 year old single, like unwed person that got pregnant when she had a fiance. So the shame of that. She had to go through 
like painful childbirth, and let's, he couldn't even wave that. He, it was his fucking baby, and he couldn't even say like, no, 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 she's good, give her a pass. He was probably just like, well, if I give, if I give you a pass, and I give her a pass, right? and then every, and then, pain, and then like childbirth isn't painful anymore, and like, then how are women gonna get stronger, you know? Um, and, then, and then she had to have a fucking baby. And not just any baby, she had Jesus, and Jesus knew like everything. So he was like this know-it-all fucking baby that you have to raise. Like, and, like he knows things before you know things. He's like, you're out of flour. And she's like, damn it, I was just going to fucking make a <laughs> Go to the store. Jesus. <laughs> she was the only one that got to use that in context and like not have it be like you're taking the Lord's name in vain. She's just like, Jesus is your name. You know? <laughs> um, another story that's kind of fucked up is the Abraham thing. I don't know how familiar we are with the Bible. Here's a quick rundown. Abraham and Sarah were like fucking 90 years old. And God God rolls in and he's just like, oh yeah, you guys have been asking, you know that baby you've been asking me for? And she's like, yeah, I asked you for that like 70 years ago. <laughs> when I was 20 and totally ready to have a baby. I'm 90 now. I feel like we're past it. And he's just like, well, asking you shall receive, boom, baby. Yeah. <laughs> he gave them a fucking baby. They had a baby, liver spots, and like, Fucking Alzheimer's. Like, you shouldn't have all three at the same time. <laughs> but he gave it to them. And then, like, a jealous 16-year-old fucking girlfriend, he's like, why you guys are getting really buddy-buddy with that baby I gave you? <laughs> Just think it's fucking funny that you guys like that baby so much that I gave you. And so then this kid's, like, now a teenager, and he's like, listen up. If you love me, you'll kill the kid. If you love me for real, you will kill that baby. He's like, why? Why don't you kill the kid? He's like, do it! Kill the fucking kid. <laughs> so he takes him on this long hike, and then right before Abraham's about to kill his own fucking son, God steps in and is like, whoa, dude, chill. <laughs> oh, you're gonna fucking kill your son? <laughs> but like, for me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 